The psychosexual stages of development are discussed often in psychology courses and are definitely something you're going to want to have a very good understanding of. This theory of development comes from Sigmund Freud. You've likely heard his name at some point throughout your life as he is one of the most well-known figures in the field of psychology. That said, he's not without his controversies. So later on in the video, we're going to be discussing some of those controversies. Do your best throughout the video to see if you can catch any of them as we go along. Before we get to the controversies though, it's important to first have a good understanding of what this theory is and some of the different parts of it or some different terms that you might wanna know with it, as well as an understanding of the stages themselves. But first, my name is Keegan. I have a master's degree in counseling. I make videos like this to help you understand psychology, counseling, and mental health more generally. The psychosexual stages of development have five phases, oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. We're going to discuss each of the stages in more depth in a bit here. Before we get to that though, it's important to talk about some of the other parts of it. For example, he felt as though it didn't happen at the same time. Freud's belief was that when someone did not resolve the conflict that occurred at a stage, they became fixated is the term that he used. This means they were not able to resolve the conflict at that stage and therefore the fixation prevented them from moving on to the next stage. As a result, their emotional development would be frozen or would be stuck at that stage where the fixation occurred. An example of something that may cause someone to become fixated or stuck at a certain stage is something like a traumatic event happening at that point in their life. Something else that's important to understand about Freud's theory is that it's a psychosexual theory. This means that the theory is related to sexual pleasure and our psychology or our mind, or as Freud referred to it, our psychic energy. He felt as though at each stage, we had a different erogenous zone of our body that we were focusing on, or a different part of our body that was the source of the sexual pleasure at that stage. There is some controversy around what Freud believed was sexual pleasure. Some feel as though he meant pleasure more broadly, not necessarily just in a sexual sense. However, others feel as though he was more focused on the sexual pleasure in the way that we might think about it today. Either way, Freud believed that libido was the psychic or psychological energy that a person has to drive their biology. More specifically for this theory, libido was the influence that influenced our sexual drives. Freud also believed that we have a drive for life, which he referred to as eros. Named after the Greek god of love, this was our drive for self-preservation. However, on the flip side, he also believed that we have a drive for death, which he called thanatos. He felt as though this is where some of our more self-destructive urges may come from. Now let's get into the stages themselves. The first of the psychosexual stages of development is the oral phase. This stage takes place from birth until about age one. During the oral phase, the pleasure zone of the body is the mouth. This is because during this stage, food, which we ingest through our mouth, is one of our primary sources of pleasure and comfort. If somebody were to become stuck or fixated at the oral phase, they may be called an oral personality. According to Freud, those who are oral personalities may be more prone to overeating, smoking, and drinking. These people might also be seen as more clingy or more dependent. Second, from around age one to around age three, we have the anal phase, which is the second stage in the psychosexual stages of development. At this point in life, people are often potty training or toilet training and learning bowel control, which lines up with the pleasure zone of the body during the anal stage, which is the anus. A conflict that can often occur at the anal stage is when parents are too punitive or too indulgent. For those who do not resolve conflicts at this stage, they may be called an anal retentive personality or character or just more simply anal retentive. These people are often considered to be compulsive and neat. They might also be seen as frugal, stingy, they may hoard, or on the flip side, be overly orderly. However, there's also an anal explosive character. These people are typically seen as messy, unclean, and unorganized. The anal explosive character might also be considered scatterbrained or impulsive. Third is the phallic phase of the psychosexual stages of development. This stage occurs from around three to around age six. In this stage, the pleasure zone of the body is the person's own genitals. However, they also may become more interested or aware in the genitals of other people as well, according to Freud. The phallic phase brings in some things that you're going to want to be aware of about Freud's theory, which is the Oedipus and the Electra complex. We're going to break each of these down into a little bit more detail here. 
And as we do, remember how I said that this theory is pretty controversial in some ways. And some of this really shows up in these upcoming parts, so pay attention to see if you can catch that. The Oedipus Complex gets its name from the Greek play Oedipus Rex. In the play, the main character unknowingly kills his father and then unknowingly marries his mother. Freud believed that boys have anxiety and fear about penis castration. He also believed that they have unconscious sexual desire for their mother. In Freud's view, the boy learns to resolve his anxiety and fear by identifying more with his father and then resolving some of the unconscious sexual desire toward his mother to be a non-sexual form of love. Similarly, Freud believed that girls have an unconscious sexual desire for their father. And then, similar to boys, they will also learn to identify with the mother and to resolve some of their unconscious sexual desire for their father to be a non-sexual form of love. Freud termed this the Electra complex. For girls, Freud also believed that during the phallic phase, they would experience penis envy. His theory was that during the phallic phase, girls would realize that they did not have a penis like boys do. And because of this, they would then develop envy around not having a penis. In some cases, he would go so far as to say that girls would go on to have kids and try to have a boy to satisfy their anxiety around not having a penis of their own. That's a bit on the Oedipus complex, the Electra complex, and penis envy. Now let's go back to the phallic phase more broadly. As far as the phallic personality goes, they are seen to be reckless, narcissistic, vain, and proud. Additionally, they're said to be afraid and incapable of close love. Freud also said that he believed this was a cause of homosexuality. Fourth is the latency phase, which occurs from around age six to around age 12. At this point, sexual urges are repressed and lie dormant. During this time, children are said to channel their energy into school, sports, hobbies, and other activities. Energy is also channeled into friends, and there's a focus at this stage of finding same-sex friends, according to Freud. The latency phase is said to be the quiet before the storm that is adolescence, which we talk about in the next phase. But before we get to that and some of the criticisms around Freud's theory, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please help me out by giving it a like and subscribing. So around age 12, the fifth stage, or the genital phase, begins. This aligns with puberty, and Freud believed that at this point, people start to form an interest in the opposite sex. He believed that the less energy they had to put into resolving the conflicts at earlier stages, the more energy they would now have to put into relationships. The theory also states that at this point, children become less self-centered, less narcissistic, and have increased interest in others. Okay, now let's talk about some of the controversies. As you likely noticed, there are many parts of Freud's psychosexual stages of development that we'd now say are quite problematic. Of course, some of the more controversial parts of the theory are the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex. The theory is also quite problematic though because it has a strong view that heterosexual relationships are correct and that it pathologizes non-heterosexual relationships. The theories also seem to be degrading to women and to people who do not align with the gender binary. Some of this may come from the theory being almost entirely focused on male development. It should also be mentioned that one of the shortcomings that's often cited with Freud's theory is that it does not consider culture at all. It should also be mentioned that Freud's theory of psychosexual development is really quite untestable. Not only that, but he did not use any research or any observation of children in the development of his theory. Like I said, there are some controversies around this theory. Freud's theory of psychosexual development though, does not have many followers today, at least not in the way that Freud saw it in his time. However, it's not completely irrelevant. Specifically, the theory brought awareness to how early experiences in life can influence our development. It also contributed to the idea that unconscious influences can contribute to our behavior. That said, while his theory is problematic in many ways, we must also recognize it as a starting point and how in some ways it has contributed to our view of development today even if it's in the ways that we don't think development occurs. I hope that you found this video helpful. Make sure that while you're here, you check out some of the other videos on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.